Welcome to Yankee Stadium. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to talk about the man that I call Red Lightning, Stephen Ridings. There weren't a lot of bright spots for the Yankees in 2021, but for me the improvement of the pitching staff in a number of areas was really encouraging, and we've got to give some credit to Matt Blake, the Yankees' new pitching coach. One guy in particular that stood out, and partially because he's six foot eight and throws 100 miles an hour, hard not to stand out, is Stephen Ridings. Now, I don't want to get the hype train going too much because we've said similar things in the past about Nick Nelson last season, but he regressed significantly. But Steven Ridings has the stuff to be an elite pitcher. He appeared in five games at the big league level. He only allowed one run. That's a 1.80 ERA. He appeared in 14 games at AA and had a 4-0 record with a ridiculous 0.47 ERA. That's incredible. He then appeared in seven games at AAA, and his ERA jumped to a still very solid 2.70. StatCast has his top pitch as a sinker that he throws at 97.2 miles per hour. I'll tell you why that's unusual. I didn't even realize that he was throwing a sinker. To me, it just looked like a good hard fastball, but if StatCast says it's a sinker, that means it's getting some movement. Now, here's the interesting part. At 97 miles an hour, it's harder than his four-seam fastball, which is thrown at an average of 96.8. That's unusual that he throws the sinker harder than the fastball. And we got to see the fastball reach 100 miles an hour to the first hitter he faced in the big leagues. We mentioned six foot eight. That's the same height as Delon Batantis, former outstanding Yankees relief pitcher. And we've shown on this channel before that his mechanics are similar to Delon Batantis, but he doesn't have the same issues with throwing strikes that Batances had on occasion. Last year in the minors, Steven Ridings had 42 strikeouts and four walks. You can't do much better than a 10.5 strikeout to walk ratio. Those are video game numbers. In the majors, it was a very respectable seven strikeouts and two walks in five innings. That's a three and a half to one ratio. The Yankees protected him from the rule five draft this winter and put him on the 40 man roster. And I think we should expect him to make a case to start the season in the Yankees bullpen. We could be looking at another breakout season like the ones we got from Jonathan Loisega last year, who had an incredible year, was just dominating start to finish. We also saw drastic improvements from Clay Holmes after he was traded from Pittsburgh, and he immediately started throwing strikes. And he's another guy with a good hard sinker. Same goes for Mike King. I think he threw two immaculate innings last season, if I'm not mistaken. Really good hard sinker and finally learning how to control it. Besides the Yankees pitchers throwing more change-ups last year, and we saw a lot of them be way more effective with the change-up. Garrett Cole was more effective with his change-up. Jordan Montgomery was more effective with his change-up. Corey Kluber was very effective with his change-up. We're seeing the Yankees put more of an emphasis on getting ground balls. We're seeing more sinker ballers get reps. You know, Mike King was kind of a guy that they had to push along. He struggled for a long time, but it looks like he's finally put it together out of the bullpen. And it looks like uh, Clay Holmes found something when he joined the Yankees. You know, a good, hard 99-mile-an-hour sinker is tough to square up and get in the air. Some of you might remember Chen Ming Wong, how great it, he was at preventing home runs. Zach Britton, during his heyday, was the same way. Now, Zach Britton's going to be out all of next season with Tommy John surgery. So, you know, it makes sense that the Yankees are trying to get more guys who throw ground balls. And Steven Ridings throwing that 97.2 mile an hour sinker, according to StatCast, hey, can only help.